Good evening and welcome to another episode of Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. I'm Chris Hansen. Tonight, in a collaboration with True Crime Stories and our old friend Wes Most, we're going to dig into the Sherry Pepini case. I'm sure you know a lot about this case, but not as much as we know. The twists and turns are incredible. And finally, after this years-long odyssey, there appears to be resolution and justice. Tonight, the investigation into the bizarre kidnapping of California mom Sherry Papini heating up. The Shasta County Sheriff telling us a team will interview Papini tonight, looking for any clues that could lead to her abductors. For weeks, her face was everywhere. Photos of the pretty petite blonde woman with big blue eyes and wide smile were ubiquitous on social media. Missing posters dotted the streets of the woman's hometown of Redding, California. And on TVs nationwide, her face and name were shown ad nauseum. This was the scene when a young mother of two vanished weeks before Thanksgiving 2016. The story dominated the news nationwide and everyone knew the name, Sherry Papini. Sherry Papini, Sherry Papini, Sherry Papini, Sherry Papini. On November 2nd, 2016, Keith Papini returned from work at a local Best Buy to find his home empty. A quick check revealed his two children hadn't been picked up from daycare and his wife of seven years was nowhere to be found. Keith ran the Find My iPhone app for Sherry's phone and showed it was somewhere near Sunrise Drive a place Sherry had gone for a run earlier that same day. Keith drove to the spot, and there, about two feet off the road, he found Sherry's phone and earbuds neatly left in the dirt. The phone was playing their wedding song, Michael Buble's Everything, on repeat, but Sherry was nowhere to be found. Keith dialed 911 to report his wife missing, and he immediately became a suspect in her disappearance. I couldn't find her, so I called the, the daycare to see what time she picked up the kids. The kids were never picked up, so I got freaked out, so I hit, like, the Find My iPhone app thing. I found her phone, and it's got, like, hair ripped out of it, like, in the headphones. And I took a picture of her phone on the ground before I picked it up. When's the last time you heard from her? Uh, she sent me a text asking me if I was coming home for lunch. And I said, sorry, long day. And that was the last. Do you know what you Detectives began a search for Papini and gathered evidence as to who or what could have caused her to disappear. It wasn't long until they found something troubling. As they dug into the 34-year-old's personal life, investigators discovered a string of oddities. The phone numbers of two men were found among her phone contacts, but Sherry had listed them as females. One man from Michigan traveled to meet up with Papini in 2011, and the two spent an intimate weekend together. It's worth noting that during this weekend fling, Sherry had been married to husband Keith for two years. They continued to exchange flirtatious text messages throughout the years, but had not seen each other in person. The two had planned to meet up again on November 1st, 2016, just one day before Sherry vanished. But the man told authorities he couldn't make the meeting. He ended up flying back to Michigan on the same day Sherry vanished. This made him look very suspicious. The second man told investigators he met Papini at a youth program around 2000 and the pair began a serious relationship. He called Papini attention hungry and said she fabricated stories of being the victim of abuse from her family, father, and later him after the couple broke up. Sherry had also run away before in the past and was known for creating false narratives whenever the focus wasn't on her. Perhaps more troubling, Sherry's own mother called the police when Papini was 21 years old to report that Sherry was self-harming and blaming it on her mother. The family lived in fear as they never knew who or what Sherry would claim was harming her in some way. Friends of Sherry would make it even more clear, saying Papini had a history of telling lies and could not be trusted. I'm a victim. Armed with these personal interviews and details, 
investigators began to suspect that the kidnapping was a hoax, but kept their suspicions to themselves. And then it happened. Three weeks after her disappearance, on Thanksgiving Day 2016, Papini suddenly reappeared. California Highway Patrol officers responded to Interstate 5 near Woodland after multiple 911 calls about a woman wandering onto the highway. It was Sherry Papini. Her hair had been hacked off in chunks. A chain was around her waist. She'd lost weight from her already slim frame and she was covered in bruises, burns, rashes, a broken nose, and a strange brand on her right shoulder. Bizarrely, Sherry claimed law enforcement was involved in her abduction, so she would not speak to them once found. Instead, husband Keith Papini took her statement while in the ambulance on their way to the hospital. Papini claimed to have been kidnapped by two Hispanic women, and she was tied up and brutalized. She described her abductors as playing, quote, that really annoying Mexican music, and complained that they only fed her rice and tortillas. The couple branded her because that's what the buyer wanted. Sherry Papini was claiming to be a victim of human trafficking. The hospital found no signs of sexual assault or traces of narcotics in Sherry's system, which didn't quite match up to her story of being drugged during her ordeal. They did, however, find unfamiliar DNA on her clothing the DNA of a man, but no trace of the two women Sherry had claimed were her abductors. On November 30th, 2016, while on an interview about the case, Sheriff Tom Basenko mentioned he was relieved Sherry was found, but also made it clear they didn't fully believe her kidnapping story. But since Papini insisted she was kidnapped, they had to bring the case to a close. The high-profile incident began to spark numerous rumors, chief among them, that the abduction was a hoax from the start. In a statement on Good Morning America, husband Keith Papini declared that rumors, assumptions, lies, and hate have been both exhausting and disgusting. He called the accusations malicious, subhuman behavior. Sherry's husband says he is disgusted by the rumors and innuendo that the kidnapping is a hoax. Rumors, assumptions, lies, and hate have been both exhausting and disgusting. I understand people want the story pictures proof that this was not some sort of hoax plan to gain money or fabricated race war. I do not see a purpose in addressing each preposterous lie. For fans of true crime who are anxiously following the story, this is when things basically went dark. According to prosecutors and the sheriff, the investigation to find Sherry and her abductors cost Shasta County state and federal taxpayers more than $200,000. Furthermore, Sherry had collected $30,000 from the California Compensation Fund and there was close to $50,000 raised from a GoFundMe meant to bring Sherry home safe. What the general public didn't know was that this case was far from being over. As part of the investigation, police found the DNA profile of an unknown male, discovered when their clothing was submitted for familial testing, a process that searches databases for near matches that are likely from family members. One such match was found leading detectives to yet another ex-boyfriend of Papini's. This new finding negated all the statements Papini had given and would be the first thread pulled in a tapestry of deceit. On August 10th, 2020, the mysterious ex-boyfriend, now identified as 37-year-old James Reyes, agreed to a police interview. The two had dated up until 2006, just months before Sherry married current husband, Keith Papini. The two met as teenagers and rekindled their friendship a year or so before her alleged kidnapping. Reyes said Sherry contacted him out of the blue and claimed her husband was beating and abusing her. She alleged she had called the cops for help, but they had refused to assist her. In actuality, 
the police have zero records of Sherry ever reporting husband Keith for abuse. Then one day, Sherry let James know she had a plan, a plan to run away with him, and she was going to need his help. The two spoke on burner prepaid phones as Sherry built Keith up to be an abusive monster. James went on to tell investigators he drove seven hours in a rented car from his residence in Southern California to Redding, California on November 2nd, 2016. He would pick up a peony who met him after her morning jog. While Reyes had hoped the relationship would turn romantic, it never did. Sherry took his bedroom while Reyes was relegated to the living room couch. Instead of romance, James had unwittingly become a platonic accomplice in a federal crime. He had no TV, so he knew nothing about the nationwide search going on for the young mother in his own home. James went on to say Papini stayed in his apartment, eating very little, cutting her own hair, and toward the end of the stay, even asked him to brand her with the crafting implement purchased at Hobby Lobby. Sherry broke her own nose and inflicted a number of other injuries by slamming herself into various fixtures in his bathroom. Shortly before Thanksgiving, Sherry told James she missed her children and he drove her to the location she was eventually found, 150 miles south from where she vanished. Investigators returned to Papini's home to question her once again. Sherry was repeatedly told that lying to federal agents is a crime and once again, she repeated her earlier story of being abducted and outright denied meeting up with her ex. On Thursday, March 3rd, 2022, six years after scamming the police and the public, Papini, now 39, was arrested and charged with mail fraud and for lying to a federal agent. She is looking at up to 25 years in prison for her crimes and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines. The Northern California woman accused of faking her own kidnapping is being held without bail because she's considered to be a flight risk. Sherry Papini made her initial appearance in federal court today. She appeared virtually in a monitor. Papini was ordered to be detained until another hearing that is set to take place later this month. Keith Papini, meanwhile, has not been charged up until this point, but he is still a suspect. It is theoretically possible that the two concocted the plan and added the racial elements to appeal to a specific crowd. Add in the fact that Sherry tempted her accomplice with the promise of a physical relationship only to shut him down after he unwittingly aided her in her escape, and it's easy to see why some believe this was the couple's ultimate scheme from day one. Just weeks after Sherry reappeared, Keith Papini wrote himself a check for over $30,000 from the GoFundMe account to pay off credit debt, and the rest was spent on personal expenses and trips. The police have gone on record to say Sherry had more help in this scheme than just the ex-boyfriend who was questioned. Papini was warned against the consequences of lying to federal agents, but she still maintained her story. Now, with the newfound evidence, she continues to deny the mountain of proof and awaits her next court date. You have to feel sorry for her two innocent children at this point, growing up in the shadow of controversy created by their own mother and her constant stream of lies. You also have to consider the impact this will have on actual victims of these types of serious crimes. People who will be less likely to come forward because of the stigma this places on victims of violent crime. Because of the actions of Sherry Papini, who knows how many people were harmed while police were wasting valuable resources looking for a false victim. How many of those donators on that $50,000 GoFundMe will never give another dime because they were left feeling ripped off after finding out Sherry was never missing in the first place? Sherry may not have thought about any of that before, but she will have plenty of time to consider the impact of her actions while she spends time away from friends, family, and freedom in the walls of a federal prison.
Sherry Papini has pleaded guilty to mail fraud and making false statements to federal officials. She could have faced up to 20 years in prison and a quarter of a million dollars in fines. But because of the guilty plea, the prosecutors are recommending eight to 14 months in federal prison. Since the guilty plea and the arrest, Sherry Papini's husband has filed for divorce. I remember very clearly being on the Papini property in the weeks after the alleged kidnapping disappearance. And I remember what outrage I experienced from a neighbor uh, who lived next door admonishing me for being on the property, for trying to talk to the Papinis who were not home at the time, although it was clear they were living in the home. There were packages outside the door. And he was very angry that anyone would dare question Sherry's story. And a lot of people felt the same way. And, and so I guess it's with some regret, but a sense of justice that this case is finally resolved with a guilty plea. And hopefully Sherry Pabini's husband and their children can move on. We'll see you next time on Have a Seat with Chris Hansen. Until then, I'll be watching and listening.